Do you know Harvard Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts? In this video, I'm gonna share with you my Harvard Square. Stay tuned. So I first met Harvard Square as a junior in high school back in 1984. I was a student in the suburban Detroit area at a prep school. And I flew in to visit with my older brother, who then was a freshman at Harvard. And I'll never forget the first time I laid eyes on Harvard Square. Back then in 84, the square was under construction as they were building uh, the new MBTA underground subway and busway station. And so there was a massive construction site in the absolute heart of Harvard Square. And yet despite this, despite all the construction, there were many people still making their way through Harvard Square. And coming from suburban Detroit and the carscape culture, for me to see people actively passing through urban center was something out of the ordinary, something special. And so the pulse of life in Harvard Square immediately attracted me and still does to this day. So. I wanted to share with you my memories, my experiences uh, over the years in Harvard Square and some of the things that stand out. I returned to Cambridge as a Harvard student in 1985, my freshman year, where I lived in Thayer Hall in Harvard Yard, just across from Harvard Square. And I always felt that incredible shift when you move from the hushed quiet of Harvard Yard to the hustle and bustle of Harvard Square, literally just outside Johnston Great, uh, Gate and across Massachusetts Avenue. So it is an interesting juxtaposition, the yard and the square. And lucky me, of course, to be a Harvard student living in Harvard Yard and to have the, the square uh, on my doorstep. As I came from a suburban experience, it was even a unique and new thing to, for example, have a 24 hour store located outside my door across the street that I could walk to at any hour. Also keeping late hours in Harvard Square in the time that uh, I met the square was the Tasty, which was a diner with a dozen stools located at the corner of JFK Street and Brattle in the heart of the square. And it was around from 1916 to 1997. And as a Harvard student, I have many memories of going there late at night, often well past midnight for something to eat or drink and sitting down uh, and chatting with whoever might be there, like me getting something late at night and uh, bantering with the friendly staff and just enjoying the whole scene. I have in particular this memory of the tasty where one night for whatever reason, when I went there very late, I was the only person there. And when I sat down to get, as I recall, a coffee and a hot dog, great late night college fair, I looked out the window and it had started to snow. And it was just this special quiet moment where the square was virtually empty. I was at the Tasty on my own alone. I had this experience that you just, it's just, I'm sharing it because it was so incredible. Wow. As for movies in the square, uh, Once Upon a Time on Church Street was the Harvard Square uh, movie theater uh, multiplex, which I'm sure many people remember. But for me, when I think of uh, cinema and the square, I think of the Brattle movie theater in the heart of Harvard Square on Brattle Street. And on the other side of Harvard Square, the Harvard Film Archive. At the Brattle and the Harvard Film Archive, I've essentially had my world cinema education on the big screen. The first film that I ever saw at the Brattle was Paul and Pressburger's uh, 1945 black and white classic, I Know Where I'm Going with Deborah Carr. Beautiful film, loved it. And once I started going, I couldn't stop. And to this day, I still enjoy the Brattle. I've seen so many wonderful films here over the years. Uh, the list is endless. I've seen Chinatown and Dr. Shivago. I've seen some special world cinema classics uh, in addition 
like uh, they had a special screening of Michael Gambone in The Singing Detective and the wonderful 10 short films that make up the Decalogue. It's just, there's been so many great films from all the world here. And of course, Casablanca, uh, which has a long history at the Brattle of being shown and celebrated. And I just never tire of the experience of being in the audience with others to see great films uh, at the Brattle. So love that. Same at the Harvard Film Archive. It's a little different there in the uh, lower level screening room of uh, the Carpenter Center. And of course, no food or drink. It's uh, a little bit a different vibe, but you're still looking at great cinema on the screen. And I remember when Vlada Petrik was alive and directing the Harvard Film Archive film program that uh, he would on occasion introduce uh, films that were being screened and that made it even more special. And uh, gosh, to come out of the Carpenter Center after seeing an Antonioni film or the equivalent uh, on a summer's night and just being in that movie magic space you're in after seeing a great film and then, you know, to walk out and find my way through Harvard Yard late at night and sort of relish the moment of having seen the film is extra special. So love the Brattle Movie Theater, love Harvard Film Archive, grateful that these uh, screens are showing world cinema classics and making so much joy for so many. I also relish my memories of Cafe Pamplona, which opened in 1959 and closed in 2020. Uh, rest in peace, Cafe Pamplona, this classic cafe at the intersection of Bow and Arrow Street uh, is just so close to my heart. Subterranean Cafe uh, with uh, so many tables and very uh, plain Jane, but that's what made it special. They also had an outdoor seating area where in season you could sit and sip an espresso and listen uh, to the church bells ring nearby. Back in the day as a Harvard student, I met my Harvard thesis advisor here weekly. There was always some interesting conversation going on around you. Many times, many people would come and park and read a book. I met many a friend here and have many a fond memory of uh, Cafe Pamplona. A little bit of Europe in the heart of Cambridge. Really hadn't changed much from the get. It was just the same simple, straightforward European style cafe. And I think that the inspiration and the name were so many Spanish cafes the original owner knew uh, from experience. So Cafe Pamplona, I mean, you just, it's its gonna be missed. Bookstores, uh, there's been so many great bookstores in Harvard Square over the years. Uh, I remember fondly visiting McIntyre and Moore antiquarian booksellers in Harvard Square and uh, Star Bookshop on the backside of the building that is the Harvard Lampoon and Wordsworth books, which sold new books and where I worked for a period of time. Uh, they're all gone now, but there are still some bookstores in Harvard Square. And I'm fond in particular of Harvard Bookstore uh, across from Harvard Yard on Massachusetts Avenue and at the corner of Plimpton Street. And Harvard Bookstore is just such a great bookstore. I've probably spent more time at the Harvard Bookstore than I have in any bookstore in the world. And every time I go, I just feel a sense of excitement when I enter and to see what's on the new releases table and to browse the mystery section or the literature section or the history section. Those are my faves. It's just such a great bookstore. There's great people uh, working there and a nice crowd of people coming and going. And they do readings. I have uh, fond memories of meeting Henning Mankell, the Scandinavian mystery writer uh, here, he's since passed. I feel very fortunate to have met him and to have him sign some of his books for me and to chat with him briefly. Very gracious man. So Harvard Bookstore is is special and I'm, I'm glad that it's still there. And I hope like the Grolier Poetry Bookstore around the corner, it will continue to um, thrive as we move into the future. At the Charles Hotel, the five-star hotel in Harvard Square, there is a jazz bar known as the Regatta Bar on the second floor perched in the corner. And I have uh, seen quite a few shows here over the years. And it's just so special to, to go to a live jazz show. I have memories here of seeing Joe Williams, the great jazz singer before he died. 
uh, perform at the regatta, such a wonderful performer, great show. Every time I've gone to the regatta, I've had a good time and a good experience. And um, seeing these shows over the years has been a part of my Harvard Square. Going back to the heart of Harvard Square, it's hard to imagine, but the out-of-town news stand or kiosk or uh, center is no more. It it shut up its doors in 2019. And I had a longstanding uh, tradition of finding my way to out-of-town news on a Saturday morning to pick up my uh, weekend edition of the Financial Times. And sometimes if I was busy and I couldn't get there on Saturday morning and I came either Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning, I'd find out that they were sold out. And I found it somewhat uh, reassuring to know that I lived in a place, Cambridge, that could pick up and stack dozens of copy of the Financial Times Weekend Edition and it could sell out. So, uh, you know, clearly I was not alone in relishing the opportunity to go to out of town news. I remember when I first arrived in Harvard Square in the mid 80s that, you know, this is the pre internet era for the most part it was really a destination for foreign news publications. And, you know, clearly as the world changed and more people found what they were looking for online, it became less of a magnet for people coming in for publications, but it still had a wonderful vibe. And, you know, with kiosks around the world still in existence, I would like to believe and think that it could still be uh, possible for an institution like that to survive and thrive. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that space. It'll probably become a visitor center uh, for people, but we'll, we'll hope for the best as the space is reinvented. Brattle Square uh, Florist at 31 Brattle Street. I've been frequenting forever, it seems, 30 plus years. And uh, it's a friendly florist. And every time I go in there, I have a good experience. The staff is very helpful. They know me without knowing me and take good care. And, you know, it's just so invigorating to step into a florist and smell uh, the flowers and just be uplifted by being in the presence of blooms. And I love how the florist spills out onto the sidewalk. And again, that the staff is so um, attentive to helping you find what you need. So you leave with uh, just the right uh, bouquet. My real estate offices in my career as an agent have been in Harvard Square. I worked at Hammond Real Estate, rest in peace, uh, from 99 to 2016, which was located at 2 Brattle Square behind the Brattle Movie Theater. So I was in the heart of Harvard Square every day uh, of my life, essentially, as a working professional in those years. And then I joined Compass Real Estate and their offices, well, I first was in a temporary office with a compass near the Harvard Square Post Office. And then they landed on the other end of the square at 1073 Massachusetts Avenue uh, at the intersection with Trowbridge and then took on a second office uh, at 1100 Massachusetts Avenue, which is my current office. And it's been interesting and fun for me uh, to be on the other side of Harvard Square these last so many years and to get to know the square from a different perspective, if you will. But it's just been great for me as a professional to have the great good fortune of working in Harvard Square, meeting clients here and coming in to the square and uh, to know it as a, a place to come to work as much as a place to come to study or a place to visit uh, and enjoy for special events, you know, like Oktoberfest, which I've attended more than once with my daughter uh, in season. So all sorts of reasons for me to be in Harvard Square and as I think back on all the years I've known it and the things I've shared with you here, I feel very fortunate to have been in Harvard Square and for it to be such a big part of my life. I'm excited now that we're in this moment of transformation and change to see what direction it takes uh, coming out of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, certainly I'm optimistic and hope that uh, it experiences new life and, and positive new realities. You know, there is always change, change is constant. Yes, a number of places have closed up in recent years and many people uh, bemoan the reality of the ever-changing face of the square, but it is just the way the world is and the world is changing. We'll hope that the change that's afoot is for the best and that uh, my Harvard Square is your Harvard Square 
and our Harvard Square to continue to enjoy for many years to come. My name is Charles Cherney, and as a real estate agent, I'm talking to people each and every day about Harvard Square, Cambridge as a whole, and neighboring Somerville. And I welcome the opportunity to connect with you by text, telephone, email, or in person as you give thought to buying the right home or selling for the best price in the community. Reach out at any time. I look forward to hearing from you, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care.